Hello everybody, Dave here again. Yeah, I made a video earlier today. I'm going to make another one. And I was thinking about it. I think on, uh, you know, if you've subscribed to my page or looked under my channel here, <clears throat> you've seen that I've made, you know, a video on how to import um, a race into wind speed. <clears throat> but I don't think I ever made one on how to import a race into e-wind speed, which is the um, program out on the web. For figuring a race, um, it used to be software that you would load onto your computer, but now it's part of the, um, you know, the pigeon.org website on there, and it's, it's got its own uh, address and everything, and everything that was in wind speed that you'd have to buy now is out on the website. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, you know, the steps on how I create a race in e-wind speed and then import the file um, into there after I've um, figured a race out and saved it to a flash drive and then all of the steps that I do. All right, so in our club, just to give you guys an overview, we like basket on a Friday night. They all come to my house, you know, they, and I have their clocks because um, from, from the way you see we do things, I have the clocks from the week before. So they show up on my house on a Friday, and I start the race, and everybody's clock. I use the blue badge, you know, on the basketing. Start a race, and everybody's clock. They take their clocks to their loft, plug them into their antennas and all that good stuff. Then the race, let's, let's say the next day is Saturday. Um, the birds are released at the station wherever they went. They get up. They fly to the loft. And when all the members get most of their birds back, or all of their birds, whatever, then they drive their clock to my house, the same place we basketed the night before. We have four members in our club, so um, and there it's a less than twenty miles. They still got to drive to my house, but they want all of their birds that are in their clocks to show up, you know, on the race results. So um, this way we kind of stop that, you know, rather than like me have to. Like they call it in and I have to type in manually all of their times and everything. A lot of members didn't like that. They wanted to see how each one of their birds plays. So in order to do that, um, they bring me the clock. And then as long as they leave the clock plugged in and as long as they want, every bird that goes over the antenna will be part of the race. Um, so anyway, so then they bring it to my house and the next day on Saturday. And then I figure the race. So I'll show you the first thing that happens on Saturday is usually the liberator will call me, say, hey, Dave, you know, the birds went up at 7 o'clock and 7.30 on the B race, you know, A for, you know, 7 for A, 7.30 B, and they give me the weather conditions of where they were at and everything, okay? So once I get that, then I usually, um, this is what I'll do, I'll, I'll open up Chrome, and I have it saved in there, you know, for the um, E wind speed. I have a folder called it Pigeon Stuff. And I have a shortcut on there that takes me to this website, pigeon-ndb.com forward slash eWindSpeed home. And I'm already past the login space. I've already logged in already. Um, but if if you don't, you know, have like a, I have a password manager that pro logs me in. But if you don't do that, you'd have to log in. So we're up here. We're under the Montello RPC. That's the name of our club. We're under the 2023 Old Bird season. Um, and then the first thing I would do, I'd have to create a race. Okay. And I'm not going to create one now because I don't want to cause problems and stuff. So I'm going to just give you the for instance that we did last week. So, um, I created a one Wilson and a two Wilson. This was done on six, three, and this was the release time, six fifteen, six forty five, an A and a B race from Wilson, Minnesota. Okay. When I went to create this race, I went up here to add new. Now, just to show you something here, if you're um, part of a combine or, you know, a concourse, you're going to see another link here where you would click on this, where the that liberator or the secretary for that created the race, and everybody that's a part of that would be into that, okay, into this parent org races. Um, the one we did, though, was for a club race only. So I came in here last week. I hit add new. Is this a combine? I said no. 
<clears throat> and then I filled all this out. Um, it's all self-explanatory. You know, you're going to put your race date in here. Um, I had, you know, if you put information in there from one week to the next, you know, you'll see, you know, it saves it in there. These are all the stations that we've released from. Put that in there. And you're always going to have to put in sunrise. Even though it's a one-day race, I always put in sunrise and sunset. Just it's a habit. You know, um, I mean, if, if they all came back the same day, I guess these times really are kind of, you know, irrelevant. Um, especially, you know, if they went up on a Saturday and they're back, at, you know, in the afternoon. I mean, there's there's no reason to, this ain't going to figure the, cal you know, calculations any different. But if it was a Saturday race and the birds didn't come back till Tuesday, you're going to need to have times in here accurate sunrise and sunset times. Then I went in here and I called it, you know, a race. Um, and usually, like I said, the A races would have like an odd number in front of them, like one Wilson, and the B race would be two Wilson, okay? So um, I went in here and I've created this as an A, and then the release time was 645. And you could put general conditions in here, like what, it, what the weather was like when the birds went up. Type anything you want in there till don't let you type anymore. The release wind and the weather, you know, fair, you know, what was the temperature out there? And then the arrival time, which if you're figuring this before, you know, they even brought you the clock, um, then you kind of got to know how fast pigeons fly, you know, um, 40 miles an hour, whatever, 50 miles an hour if you're lucky. Um, then you can say, okay, well, it's a 200-mile race, you know, and they go 50, you know, they should be back in four hours. You could go look at, like, Wonderground, what I do, go ahead four hours and kind of get an estimated weather you know, you can always come in here and change this, but I'm just saying, you know, some when this is going to report on the on the uh, diploma and stuff, if they ever get one, you know, what the weather was like. So a lot of them like it to be fairly accurate, you know, not just a bunch of hogwash information in there, which isn't even close, you know. Um, then after you get this in here, usually the bottom here is all figured out. We use just um, uh, AU calculations and you would hit save, okay, and it'll create that race. Then I usually, um, I'm going to hit close on this. I'm not going to save it. Then I went back in and hit add B, no, and to add the B race. And I went through and added everything except over here. This got changed to a B, the release time and all that got created, okay? So then both when both races are created, um, now I'm all set to import the birds from the race in, you know, it's called clocking into the race so then e -win speed could figure out who won the race. Um, so then you come up here under the clocking tab and now, like I said, I have a USB thing plugged into my laptop here that I saved over from my other computer. And so you could, this is where you would add it manually, you know, and, and if somebody had a bird, let's say they had five birds in a race and not one of them come back, you would have to add a no report to them. You know, um, you do this here, but I'm going to do an import by date. And I'm going to come up here then, um, and it says choose files. Now, okay, now the computer needs to know where the heck is these files that I need to import. So right now I'm reading the D drive. That's not where my USB is. It's actually plugged into the E drive, okay? So when I change this over here, Everybody, if you're using, like I said, the file explorer on your on your computer, you just have to find out where it is. If you saved it on your computer, it could be under your documents file. If you made a folder on your computer, there could be one called Addis there. But I know mine's always going to be under Addis because if you're using Pydex, you need to have a folder called Addis, you know, either somewhere on a flash drive on your hard drive so that the the imports go into that okay um so now here it is when i double when i click on it you'll say there's nothing there well th there are there are files there <coughs> excuse me but the internet explorer just doesn't show them okay um but they're there if you're sure that you saved them to that they'll be there now when i hit down here upload you'll see it's going to come up on here Upload the four files, which I know there should be four because there were four people in the race, four clocks. 
and I'm going to hit upload. Now when it comes up, if I had, let's say, multiple races saved under that Addis on my flash drive, you're going to see dates on here, 6367. So whatever date that you actually knocked off the race and uploaded it to the to the USB, that's the date you want to use because that's probably the one you're going to import into the most current race. So you click on that and you hit next. Now here's the next neat screen, which like I said is cool. You got I have two races in the clock, one and two. And then over here are all the races that um that I can put that race results into. Well, we knew that one was was Wilson one here, and two was two Wilson, okay? So now down below, you know, it says flight one is going into 615 one Wilson, flight two is going into two Wilson 645. Now, if you've already done this before, you know, you would hit replace existing clock. Let's say this is a third time you're doing it, you know, you'd replace it. But if it's brand new, you would click the add new clockings one, okay? And um, so I'm going to hit um, on this one, replace existing. And what happens is on here, it comes up. These lofts could not be matched, okay? So then... I have four names in here, so their clock name isn't the their loft name isn't the same as their clock name. So I know Nichols is Roger Nichols, and Wilson is John Wilson, and Wojtas is Bob down here, and Menke is Fritzman. Oops, I didn't mean to do that, but anyway, it will go back in there and then you know, you'll, it'll automatically merge it into their file, into their race, okay? And that's um, how, how you'll be able to merge their, you know, things into their race. So, um, you know, like I said, and it works out really good that way because then, you know, you don't have to go in there and manually add all the times. As long as it's on the file there, everything will work out hunky-dory. So, Hope this was a big help to anybody. If anybody has any questions, they can always shoot me an email. And, um, yeah, other than that, have a great day, and we'll talk with you guys later.